everyone how are you guys this week uh you guys are back here on the brush by brandy youtube channel and we're going to work on this piece here behind me um and i love this one because my customer actually calls it her little black dress piece and i think it fits it perfectly so um i'm just finishing this one up but it's this incredibly smooth just really beautifully refined finish um with very simple clean lines with the black gold a little bit of exposed wood a wood stain top. Um, the details really bring this together. Wait until you see what we do to the legs on this one. So I'm super excited. We're going to use some Dixie Belle silk. We're going to use some sanding techniques with my surf prep sander, um, some voodoo gel stain. Um, but this look really comes together. And in the end, it truly is a little black dress. So I hope you guys like it. Let's go ahead and get this piece started. All right, here is where I started on this piece. It had beautiful wood grain. That is what caught my eye when I saw this picture pop up on my Facebook Marketplace. I had to go pick this one up. It's actually in remarkably good condition. So I'm gonna start off just by taking my hardware off with a screwdriver, and then I'm gonna give this a thorough cleaning using my Dixie Belle White Lightning. No matter what kind of cleaner you use, you always wanna make sure you rinse afterwards with water. This is just to remove any cleaning residue that may be left behind by the cleaner. So this piece was in really good shape, but it actually did need a couple small repairs. So this is a pretty minor repair that I'm gonna do on the side here. Um, I flip my piece up onto its end, and then I'm just gonna use a little bit of tight bond quick and thick, and I'm gonna apply it pretty heavily onto the side. I'm just gonna use a razor blade to kind of feed it up underneath the veneer. So veneer is a real wood that's laid on top of another real wood, um, but they can tend to separate over time, the glue gets loose, and that's where this is just chipped, a little piece of the veneer has cracked off. So my goal in doing this, pushing this glue up underneath this edge, is just to glue it back down. Um, I wanna make sure this edge is nice and secure, and then I'm gonna go ahead and fill this spot, but I don't wanna fill it as long as I've got a loose edge. As long as it's loose, I'll still continue to have cracking and peeling along the same spot. A few other alternatives with this type of repair, you can also use an iron to try to heat the glue from underneath and just re uh, reactivate the glue that's already there. You can also use a wood glue syringe and you can get those at just about any woodworking store. You can also get them on Amazon. Um, the only thing I don't like about the syringes is they tend to be single use. Um, once they're full of glue, unless you use it every day, the glue dries up on the needle and then they're really hard to use again. So even if you clean the needle out in between, they're very limited use. So I just use a razor blade and force that up underneath my veneer. And then I'm just going to use this flat piece of wood and I'm gonna clamp this edge so that um, veneer stays nice and secure. All right, my glue needs to dry. I'm gonna leave this to dry overnight and then I'll come back and do the next step on this repair. But let's go ahead and give my piece a scuff sanding. So now that my piece is all clean, I wanna go ahead and scuff sand. You wanna always uh, clean your piece before you do any sanding and that's because you can grind any dirt and oils further into the wood if you haven't cleaned it first. So I always clean my piece first and then I'll come back and clean it again afterwards when my scuff sanding is all done to remove any sanding dust. Okay, I am using my Dixie Belle Synthetic Bristle Brush. This is the Dixie Belle Mini. And a few tips for when I'm laying on Dixie Belle Silk. So I do notice that I fill my brush a little bit heavier with paint than I would with the Chalk Mineral line. So once I've got my brush nice and full, I'm gonna get my brush strokes going all the way across my piece. And I'm gonna try to work this a little bit faster than I would with the Chalk Mineral line too, because I can't add water to this to keep it in play, I need to make sure that I get all my brush strokes out before my paint starts to set up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and dig it into my applique here and I'm gonna get all my paint on and then I will clean up these brush strokes. It does give you a few minutes to play with, longer than I've experienced with other um, paints that are all in one style paints. I, I feel like Silk has more Play time, but once I've got all my paint on, I come back and I'm going to clean up those brush strokes. And then I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to let it set up and I'll correct anything I see on my second coat. But that looks pretty clean. It's even, it's all the way across. And I'm going to let that paint self level. I do not want to keep continuously working this paint. Um, once it starts setting up, you will end up getting brush strokes in there and they're harder to work out. I'm going to go ahead and get around the edges of this drawer as well. 
All right, let's go ahead and brush on this second drawer as well. So I'm gonna fill my brush a little bit heavy on paint. Now, because I can't use water to reactivate this paint, I'm gonna use the moisture from the paint to elongate it. So I just make sure I keep my paint nice and wet with itself. Whereas if it gets too thin, it's gonna to start to set up even quicker. So I keep it a little bit heavier to start out with and then I'll brush that out. Once I've got an area nice and clean, I try to not go back and touch it again. Long, even brush strokes work in small areas, so it can be a challenge if you're going across, say, a dresser top because that's a large open area. Silk also sprays really well, and you can apply it with a roller too, so those might help if you're doing those long, even spaces. But that is a beautiful coat. I'm going to go ahead and do around my drawer edges, and I'm going to leave this alone. All right, let's tackle a side, which is one of these wide open spaces that I'm talking about, so you can see what I mean. So I'm gonna fill, overfill my brush a little bit, heavier on paint than I normally would, and I'm gonna go all the way from top to bottom. Okay, and I'm just gonna work this one section. Now that small section's done, I'm gonna slightly overlap and come right next to it and do my second section. But I'm not gonna try to tackle this entire side at one time. So I'm just gonna work one small section at a time, get my brush strokes nice and even, and then move slightly over. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I'm all the way across the right, side. Here of I am with my first coat done. It's a beautiful coat. In fact, you can even see my reflection in this. There's a light brush stroke in it, but that will self level out as this dries. And I'm gonna have a beautiful coat in here. When we come back, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about throwing a second coat on top of this. Okay, we did our little glue repair right here. My glue is nice and dry. So now I wanna come back and I'm going to fill this with a little bit of Dixie Mud. I'm choosing Dixie Mud in black because my finish is gonna be black. And I'm just gonna use a putty knife. And I'm gonna scrape this even. It's not uncommon that this will take me two applications. Uh, so I'd rather do two applications than put it on too thick. So I'm just gonna get it as even as I can and tomorrow I'll sand it and if I need another application, I can come back and do a second one. So that's about my spot right there. Glued and filled. Once I paint that, you will never know it existed. This piece is a custom order, which means my customer gets to choose the finishes for her piece. It's a really cool process. But originally I had a vision in my head of leaving the bottom drawers on this piece unpainted to expose the wood grain. Um, she eventually chose to paint them, but I did send her a picture like this so she could get the vision in her head what I was thinking. So I'm curious what you guys think. Do you like the drawers painted or unpainted? All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and give a light sanding to my coat. And that's just to knock down any places where dust might have settled. I want this coat to be ultra smooth. That's why I chose silk for this look. I'm just using the Dixie Belle sanding sponge and I'm just gonna do a light pass. And then I'm just gonna take a damp rag and I'm gonna tack off any dust that I just created. All right, and I notice a difference just feeling between the two sides. That is why I sand between coats. I won't do that on my final coat, but every coat up until then, I will go ahead and sand. So I'm going to show you painting with the drawers in the body. But um, because this is a solid color, I will be taking these drawers out to paint all around them too. So I'm going to dig into my keyholes. This is Dixie Belle Silk. I did go ahead and mist my surface. It's so little water. Silk has a very low tolerance for water, but that's just enough to help my brush glide across the surface without actually affecting the makeup of my paint. Same thing here. I'm just going to mist my surface. Now you can dilute silk up to 10% if you're spraying it. So this is a, a similar application where I'm using just the tiniest amount of water on my surface, but not enough to actually affect the makeup of my paint. And that is my second coat. I'm gonna go ahead and come over here 
and repeat the process. When I'm done, this will all have two coats of Dixie Belle Silk in Anchor on it. Here's my second coat, and you can see I've painted the front of those drawers, so I'm curious, what do you guys think? Did you like the unpainted version or painted? There's Jen. She's always out with me visiting. Look at that face. I honestly don't think I could decide. I really like this piece either way. I think I could win either way on this one, either with the wood exposed or with it all painted. The next step in this look is going to be a wood stained top. So I'm going to go ahead and strip down this top using my surf prep sander. I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to sand off the existing finish. I will come back when I'm done and um, hit this with a 120 and then a 220 grit to get it nice and smooth before I put on my wood stain. The Surf Prep 3x4 Electric Ray with the vacuum does a pretty good job of taking off tops like this. I would say it took me about 20 minutes to sand through this entire top. I always do a test spot before I strip a top to decide if I need to strip chemically or if I can sand it. This one sanded pretty well, so I went ahead with my sander. So here we have the top all stripped down to bare wood, and now I'm going to apply a pre-stained conditioner. Now one thing that's really important is pre-stained conditioner comes in a water-based and an oil-based formula. This one's from Minwax. I'm using the water-based formula because I'm using a water-based stain. If I was using oil-based stain, I would choose the oil-based formula. So I have an even coat of my um, water-based pre-stained conditioner applied, and now I'm going ahead and applying an even coat of Voodoo Gel Stain in Tobacco Road. So I'm going to apply an even coat over the entire top. I love Tobacco Road because it's this nice medium brown color, but it doesn't have those orangey undertones. It actually leans a little bit gray, so it's a perfect tone for the top of this piece. Once I have an even coat, I just came back and I wiped back the excess from the top, so I leave just what's absorbed into the wood. I'm going to age the edges of this top using a little bit of caviar and a very dry brush. I'm just hitting the very edges to sort of age them and tie them into the black on the body of the piece. All right, so I'm gonna be using gemstone mousse on my next piece, and the golden gem tends to be a little bit thicker, and that's just because of the consistency of the metallic pigments that are used to make the mousse. So it thickens in between uses, but this product is so easy. I just add a little bit of water to it, and then I'm just gonna use the end of my paintbrush, and I'm just gonna stir that water in, and it brings it right back to a mousse consistency. So I actually like my mousse a little bit thinner, and so I can add a, as much or as little water as I want and just stir that right in. And I can do this over and over again because this is a water-based product. It's so much friendlier than a lot of the oil-based um, uh, liquid leaf products that are out there. And then any thick portions that you might still see in there, they, uh, it tends to coagulate, but when you brush it on, those smooth right out. It doesn't stay that way when you go to apply it. So now, I've got my mousse in a nice consistency that I can actually brush this on again. Another option is you can actually mix in some clear coat into your mousse too, and that makes it so that you don't need to seal your mousse um, at all. The clear coat will dry and it will be self-sealing. So I'm just gonna use a little bit water of water, and that's because I tend to spray my clear coats on, so this will be sealed underneath my clear coat. I'm just gonna use a small flat bristle artist brush to apply my gemstone mousse into these little crevices onto the details of this leg. Um, if you don't have a very steady hand, you can also rest your wrist right along part of the leg itself and that will hold your hand steady while you're putting these on. The other tip I wanna give you is if you get it outside the lines, that's okay, because this is water-based, you can just come back with a baby wipe and wipe off anywhere you get excess. I'm going to use gold gilding wax up on the top of this piece. My container's almost empty, so I'm just pulling it out with a popsicle stick and I'm just gonna um, apply it with my finger from there. And I just use my finger and I ride the top ridge of this molding and that just gives me this nice rich gold molding. I cleaned my hardware and applied a little bit of the gilding wax to my hardware as well. I did use Dixie Belle Silk, so it's completely optional if you want to seal, seal this paint with a clear coat or not. Um, it seals beautifully with Dixie Belle Gator Hide or any of the clear coats, or you can leave it in its natural state. I did go ahead and decide to spray my piece using two coats of Dixie Belle Gator Hide. Here's the final result. What do you think? Little black dress, you guys? I think it's perfect. It fits the image just right. I added a little bit of Would You Bend to the bottom of this piece and also the keyholes as well to give it some detail in the front. It feels very classic and elegant. I staged this with a black and white photo and some gold frames just to bring out the gold details. It almost has a little bit of a Halloween vibe. Do you guys feel that as well?
I hit the tops of all of my moldings with just a little bit of gold gilding wax and there's that top with the blackened edges. It's perfect. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can find links for everything I used in this project in the description for this post. You can find more Brushed by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and on my website at brushedbybrandy.com. The photos of this piece came out so cool with the contrast between the black and the white that I decided to do some stylized versions of it too using a filter. So what do you guys think? Do you like these better or do you like the fully staged versions? Another successful custom order. This piece is ready to ship.